Welcome you all in our lecture 1 of signals and linear systems course. <coughs> so, we start uh, this course with a uh, few definitions. So, from the course name you see that we have three words in the course name. One is signals and that is linear and then systems. So, what we will do actually we will define these signals part and then system part and try to explain few things about those things and then you know later on we'll define what is linear system so one one thing i would like to emphasize is that that all the systems that we'll study in this course those uh, those are linear systems uh, although we'll classify different types of or categories of systems like linear and non-linear system and but we will study linear systems in this course that's why this this word came you know, in this uh, course name signals and linear systems so this is the small or brief course outline uh, so we'll study what is a signal then we'll study what is a system uh, what do we mean by system modeling and ways of representing a system so these these are the basically the topic uh, that we'll discuss and after this lecture we'll, we'll be able to answer all this all these questions so what is a signal so as you see from here the signal is a function of certain variable for example time or space that carries certain information for example if you if you have a signal if you define f of t is equal to t square so you can say this this is a signal because uh, it carries certain information and it is a variable of this function is a variable of time and you can draw a figure like this and this is our f of t So in this way this is a function so uh, it's a signal because it's a function of certain variable in this case this is the variable of time and it carries the variation of the signal with respect to time but we want to give you more uh, real life examples of signals for example the in this slide you see that the signal which is an acoustic signal acoustic signals means basically sound signals uh, and uh, and this is a speech signal and you know that in our case a uh, speech signal is a complex signal so, so this is a basically complex signal because it contains uh, various frequencies and you know that the frequency range is from uh, for the case of speech it is 300 hertz to 300 hertz to uh, 4 kilohertz so it is for human speech and here in this example you see that uh, you are uttering the word how are you so it carries the information of these words and this is basically uh, the variation is with respect to time so this is with respect to time so one thing I would uh, like to say is that uh, so this is a recorded speech so how you record it you use a microphone so when you record this microphone when you use this microphone mi what does microphone do it converts the sound signal to a electrical signal so microphone works as a transducer and it converts the sound signal to electrical signal and then you can record that or you can amplify that signal so that it has much larger uh, loudness greater greater loudness uh, so so again this is speech signal and it carries certain information about the phonemes phoneme is basically the small segment of the world uh, basic very fundamental segment of the world so uh, so in this case the words are how are you and this variation you see that it propagates over time the time is the variable here moving on to the next example this is the example of seismic signal 
and seismic signal is uh, related to earthquake you know that so uh, when there is a vibration due to earthquake seismic uh, there is a recording uh, device which actually measure the vi vibration of of uh, of the earth uh, due to earthquake so this uh, here the you see the recordings actually say uh, it says about the intensity of the earthquake uh, how how it changes so initially if you s look at here initially uh, you have uh, very large intensity so initially actually you don't have any earthquake so you see that this is zero and then when the earthquake starts the the, uh, the earth is shaking uh, and then and then you get very large intensity of the that uh, that measures the uh, earthquake the intensity of the earthquake and slowly it actually gradually decreases so from here you say that it again it carries some information with respect to time so here the um, in x axis that you have the variable of time and and then this uh, with respect to this time you see that how the intensity of earthquake changes over the time when you have a large amplitudes of the seismic signal that reflects uh, the magnitude of the earthquake is very high and then it slowly decreases so moving on the uh, moving on to the next uh, example and this is very familiar to us as an electrical engineers so it's basically a voltage uh, uh, which is ac voltage this one is ac voltage and then uh, if you apply this uh, ac voltage to a uh, nonlinear device uh, you, you may get uh, the upper waveform for the current uh, so basically these are from the real uh, circuits uh, it's applied voltage and the propagates uh, the current that uh, you know that uh, results due to these vol uh, voltages in a nonlinear device so it's basically it has some distortion uh, and then this is uh, the signal is basically a bio signal uh, which is basically ecg which is ecg means electrocardiogram so so if you if you explain a uh, little bit about this information so electrocardiogram reflects uh, some information of, from the uh, from the heart actually if you place certain electrodes uh, if you place certain electrodes uh, then you you see uh, you, can, you can record this ecg signal so electrocardiogram reflects the pro, uh, the uh, proper functioning of the heart so from this signal actually you can say whether your heart is working okay or not uh, you, you see there are certain uh, waves uh, here and uh, so there is this this one let me just change the so this one here uh, this is called r wave this one here this is called s wave and 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 this signal here this is called p wave uh, so so i will not go to the details of uh, of all those uh, the explanation of these waves but what i would say that when your heart is functioning properly then uh, these waveforms uh, this will be very regular is this will be very rhythmic um, but when your uh, heart is not functioning properly uh, there is some problem uh, in how the pulses uh, con is conducted uh, th throughout the s pathways in the, in the heart if there is a, some block there then you'll say you'll see the irregularities in this you know in in, in these pulses and your your heart beats uh, those may, may be very irregular so one thing just i'd like to mention here that this r wave um, this r wave actually it uh, uh, this is part of this qrs complex so again i just give you some so this is uh, qrs complex and this r wave actually it uh, it uh, basically reflects uh, the contraction of the heart um, and then and then this s wave is related with the relaxation of the heart but anyway you don't have to actually go to go through the details we s we study this uh, ecg signal in biomedical engineering course 
so uh, anyway so th this EC signal is with respect to time and you see the variation of uh, different web shapes here and this actually carries uh, very important information about our heart so the next slide and this signal uh, is a MRI imaging signal so MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging so if I just write it here so it's a magnetic resonance imaging so so this is basically an imaging techniques and you see the uh, how our brain looks in an MRI image uh, and you see that is is how different soft uh, tissues uh, you know those are uh, those are um, you know there are some contrast among those uh, soft tissues so so this carries a lot of vital information about about different tissues of the brain and for example this one this one is basically you see that this is the skull maybe you can say this is skull right it's a white intensity and you have uh, a gray matter and white matter here uh, you have um, you have um, this brain stem this one is the brain stem and this is the spinal cord here uh, there are some cavity here which which carry some fluid which is known as cerebral uh, spinal fluid uh, so anyway so you see that there is a variation of the intensity and all those variation actually it carries information so this is basically a signal because it carries information it's a and also it is a function of certain variables so now the question comes what are the variables here so there are uh, you see that this is not a uh, this image is not changing with respect to time so it, ch it ch changes the intensity here is the signal different intensity in the gray scale so so uh, so so for example uh, here the intensity is uh, very bright and here uh, here intensity is very bright and here you you see that the intensity is very is black and th it carries information so if you if you say this is x and this is y uh, x and y then uh, each uh, coordinate of po coordinate point of x y it carries the information about about the image now uh, let me just give you a little bit more idea about the image uh, uh, so in a digitized image the image is actually divided into pixels so if this is an image suppose so maybe here suppose you have something some organs or something here so this is maybe an image suppose this is black now this image it is uh, divided into into pixel so pixel what what is a pixel so if you divide this uh, with a small uh, unit right so each of this unit this is known as pixel so this is you can say uh, it, it is coming from the picture uh, picture cell so in in brief it is pixel now in digitization you you know that there, there should be a finite number of pixels so maybe here you may have 512 pixels and here you have 512 pixels so um, so if you use a, a gray scaling gray scaling is basically uh, a which uh, which reflects different variation of black and white so black and white and in between you have gray uh, variation so you have a black you have black here and then you have uh, white and you that there are different uh, gray areas in between this black and white but if you if you use 8 bit uh, 8 bit to represent each of the in, in the in, uh, intensity of uh, each of the pixels so 8 bit uh, 8 bit implies you have how many levels you may have 2 to the power 8 which is 256 levels so now now if you uh, so that means you can say that okay if you use 0 to represent the black pixel and then you have 255 to represent the white